Good morning. From the heart, our morning daily devotional. The reading is entitled, The Great Supper, April 1st. Let every lamp be burning bright, the darkest hour is nearing, the darkest hour of its long night before the Lord's appearing. Then trim your lamps, my brethren dear, then trim your lamps with godly fear, the Master's coming draweth near, let every lamp be burning. Luke 14, verses 16 and 17. Then said he unto him, A certain man made a great supper, and bade many, and sent his servant at supper time to say to them that were bidden, Come, for all things are now ready. This parable correctly represents the condition of many professing to believe the present truth. The Lord has sent them an invitation to come to the supper which he has prepared for them at great cost to himself, but worldly interests look to them of greater importance than the heavenly treasure. They are invited to take part in the things of eternal value, but their farms, their cattle, and their home interest seem of so much greater importance than obedience to the heavenly invitation that they overpower every divine attraction, and these earthly things are made the excuse for their disobedience to the heavenly command, Come, for all things are now ready. The very blessings which God has given to these individuals to prove them, to see if they will render unto God the things that are God's, they use as an excuse that they cannot obey the claims of truth. They have grasped their earthly treasure in their arms and say, I must take care of these things. I must not neglect the things of this life. These things are mine. Thus the hearts of these people have become as unimpressible as the beaten highway. Their hearts are so overgrown with thorns and cares of this life that heavenly things can find no place. Jesus invites the weary, the heavy laden, with promises of rest if they will come to him. He would have them lay aside the heavy burdens of worldly cares and perplexities and take his yoke, which is self-denial and sacrifice for others. This burden will prove to be light. Those who refuse to accept the relief Christ offers them and will continue to wear the galling yoke of selfishness, tasking their souls to the utmost in plans to accumulate money for selfish gratification, have not experienced the peace and rest found in bearing the yoke of Christ and lifting the burdens of self-denial and disinterested benevolence which Christ has borne in their behalf. Souls for whom Christ died might be saved by their personal effort and godly example. But the precious light is hid under a bushel, and it gives no light to those who are in the house. Thank you for listening. Shalom.